Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be digging a little bit deeper into what's going on under the hood of a regression. In the previous video, we simply let Excel do its thing and give us its estimates, but we need to know how exactly Excel came up with those numbers. One thing I want you to get out of these videos is that regression is not magic. We can actually understand what's going on behind the scenes. The technique that Excel is using, and that we are going to explore here, is called Ordinary Least Squares, typically just called OLS. OLS is an optimization. We've already talked about optimization in previous videos, and specifically, OLS is a minimization. That is, it is trying to find the lowest possible value as opposed to the largest possible value. As with any optimization, there are four main steps. Establishing an objective function, the thing that we're trying to optimize, minimize in this case. Next, we take first order conditions, that is, take partial derivatives of the objective function with respect to each of the variables we're trying to choose, and set those equal to zero. Step three, we solve the first order conditions as a system of equations, and that's going to tell us what our choice variables should be. And then we can plug those back in to the original objective function to figure out what exactly is our optimized value. As with any optimization problem, we have to start out thinking about what is our objective function. And that's what we call the residual sum of squares. In OLS, we are trying to figure out what beta naught hat and beta one hat should be in order to make the RSS as small as possible. So what is the RSS? Mathematically, we define it as the sum of the squared residuals. So we take each of those EIs that we calculated in the last video, we square it, and then we add them all up. Expanding this out, we know that EI is YI minus YI hat. So plugging all that in, YI hat is just beta naught hat plus beta one hat X. Square that, add them up. When we optimize this, we're going to select a beta naught hat and select a beta one hat that's going to make this value as small as it can possibly be. So fitting this into our concept of optimization, we now have our objective function. The next thing we're going to do is take the partial derivatives of the RSS with respect to each of the beta hats, that is in our case, beta naught hat and beta one hat, set those derivatives equal to zero, and then solve. I don't want to get too deep into the calculus here, but I do want to give you an idea of what's going on. I took the partial derivative of the RSS with respect to beta naught hat up here, simplified that down a little bit, and then did the same thing with beta one hat. We now have two equations, these are our first order conditions right here, and two unknowns. Our two unknowns are beta naught hat and beta one hat, so now we can solve this thing. Of course there's going to be a substantial amount of algebra here, which I'm going to do off screen, and get us to some convenient estimators. A nice thing about simple regression is that once you do all that algebra, you get some pretty clean formulas. Let me walk you through these. Beta 1 hat, that is remember our estimate of the slope of the line, is SXY, the sample covariance of X and Y, divided by SX squared, which is the sample variance of X. The sample covariance is a statistical measure of how much do X and Y, our two variables, tend to move together? The sample variance of X is a statistical measure of how much X tends to move around by itself. For completeness, I've given you the formulas for both of these things right here, but in practice, we're just going to do this in Excel. Once we know that, we can calculate beta naught hat, which is Y bar minus beta one hat X bar. Y bar is the sample mean of y, and x bar is the sample mean of x, just the average. And then beta 1 hat, we've already calculated up here, we'll just plug that right in. Luckily for us, Excel has some formulas we can use for these. Back over here in Excel, I'm now going to calculate our beta 1 hat. We'll first calculate the covariance of q and p. So I'm going to use the Excel formula covariance dot S, S stands for sample, and now I'm going to select our column for our Q's, and then column for our P's. Here we're going to make sure that we don't include the title of 
the variable at the top. Next, I'm going to calculate the variance of x. In this case, our x variable is px. I'm going to use the Excel formula, var for variance, dot s for sample, and then select that column. Beta 1 hat equals covariance of q and p divided by variance of p, which is negative 9.5, exactly the same as we found using the regression in Excel. Next, we need to find beta naught hat. For this, we're going to need the mean of price and quantity. We can use the average formula in Excel for that. We'll do our dependent variable q first. So I'm going to take the Excel formula average, and then I'm going to select our q column. I'm going to do the same thing, average of our p column. To get beta not hat, our formula is y bar, so that's this one right here, minus beta 1 hat times x bar. We get 4,279, which is exactly the same as we see up here from the original regression. So for a simple regression like this, one with just one explanatory variable, we can actually replicate what the regression did with some fairly quick calculations in Excel. And this is based completely off of our intuition about minimizing the RSS, the residual sum of squares. Let's think a little bit more about how this works by going over to our last tab in this Excel file that says OLS demo. On this sheet, I have some formulas set up so that we can just mess around with regression a little bit to think about what OLS is actually doing. In these yellow boxes here, I'd like you to just put in some numbers just to make a guess as to what we think, maybe what the equation could look like. Of course, we know what it's actually going to be, but let's just put in, say, 3,000 and negative 5. The sheet is now going to calculate what the residuals would be if this were the regression line, and then square those and add them up to get the RSS. Remember that the RSS is the thing that we're trying to get as small as possible. So let's mess around with this a little bit and change this negative 5 to say negative 7. We notice that the orange line moves around a little bit and the RSS changes a little bit. In fact, it actually went up and we actually want it to go down. So it looks like our orange line here is a little bit too far to the left, so let's bump this number up a little bit. Let's make this 5,000. Well, it went a little bit too far. You can see the RSS went up quite a bit, so let's try 4,000. You can see now that our RSS has gone down considerably. And we can see that this line is cutting through our cloud of points, kind of through the middle of it. And if we were to actually put in the values from our OLS solution, what we get is the smallest RSS possible. And you can see that this number right here matches up with this one down here. A convenient feature of OLS is that we can add on to our models relatively easily. And when we do so, the technique of minimizing the RSS is basically the same. Why might we want to expand our models? Well, of course, we know that most outcomes in economics are complicated things that have a lot of different factors going on. And Specifically, we don't actually think that price is the only factor in determining how much of something people buy. There's many other factors there. When we add more variables into our regressions, we move from simple regression into multiple regression. Multiple regression allows us to examine the relationships between our outcome and lots of different explanatory variables while holding the others constant. In simple regression, we were able to use those first order conditions and come up with some pretty nice clean formulas for our estimates. In multiple regression, we can't really do that anymore. So we are going to be letting Excel handle it. Let's return to our example and think about a new model where instead of just px, we've added in two new explanatory variables. So we have qx as a linear function of the price of x itself, but also the price of some other good, 
PY, and M, the consumer's income. We no longer have a nice, simple, two-dimensional graph with a regression line. Now that we have four variables here, we have to think about this in a four-dimensional space, which of course we can't really conceive of visually, but you can still think about these beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 as the slope, but with respect to each of these individual variables. So for example, beta 1 tells us the relationship between px and qx, but holding the other two variables constant, saying that we're not letting py and m move at all, we're just going to be changing px. So this is going to come back to our concept of caterus paribus. All else equal, this is what happens when the price of x changes. And the same thing can be said about beta 2 and beta 3. As I mentioned earlier, the technique for figuring out what our estimates should be is exactly the same. We're going to minimize the RSS. The RSS is defined still as the sum of the squared residuals, but the calculation for the residuals is now going to involve our two new variables and therefore also our two new estimates, beta 2 hat and beta 3 hat. But overall, it looks very similar to what it did before in the simple regression. The difference is now we have four unknowns that we want to figure out. Beta naught hat, beta 1 hat, beta 2 hat, and beta 3 hat. So there's going to be four first order conditions. We're going to take the partial derivatives of the RSS with respect to each of these four variables, set them equal, and then we're going to solve that. I went ahead and calculated those first order conditions based on each of our four partial derivatives, set them equal to zero, and this is going to be our system of equations to solve. This already starts to look like a bit of a mess though, and I don't think you or I want to sit down and solve those, so we are going to let Excel handle this. I'm back over here on our data one sheet in Excel. I'm going to go back to the data analysis tool pack, regression, but now we are going to select all of our variables to run our multiple regression. The Y range we're using is going to stay the same as before, going to be our Q column here, but I need to change our X range. I'm now going to select PX, PY, and M by holding down shift as I select them, and then select this entire block of variables by holding control shift and clicking down to select all of these. When you run multiple regression, you want to make sure all of the variables you're using are in one contiguous block like this. That way you can select them all at once. Make sure labels is still checked and click OK. We're now going to get a new regression output that looks pretty similar to the one that we had before, but now we have four rows in our table here. Like before, the numbers that we're going to want to pay attention to are the coefficients. This number right here where it says intercept, that's our beta naught hat. Right here is our beta 1 hat, beta 2 hat, and beta 3 hat. Again, I want to make it clear that when it says px, py, and m here, that does not mean that that's the value of those variables. That's, this is the value of the coefficient estimate that goes next to those variables. So we're going to take these numbers and now we can put them back into the equation that we're trying to estimate. So here I've plugged these back into the equation and now we've got our demand function. A new, richer demand function that has three variables on the right hand side instead of just price. Now if we wanted to predict a quantity demanded based on a known px, py, and m, we could simply plug those numbers in and calculate it out. And that's really all there is to running regressions in Excel, but we've only just gotten started when it comes to interpreting them.